Hello, welcome back to Brockwell Lane, back to the shelf layout again. I've um, completed another building uh, for this space, uh, the low profile buildings which I was showing you last time. I've got this big gap here and uh, I've completed another building which happens to be down here which is now being queued. Um, this is bodged together again by uh, with bits of waste material the brick piece on balsa wood by the way I showed you that last time it's it's just two layers of balsa wood one raised area there the bottom bit is brick paper but that was salvaged from one of the magazines uh, they give you free buildings to make which I never make up because they're never usually suitable for my layout but I do I did cut bits out and use that it's sort of cobbled together with lots of strips but you shouldn't really notice that when it's in place this top is plastic card. It happened to, happens to be N-gauge planks, I think. Uh, again, I put several bits off cuts together and made this B&Q sign roughly out of paper. I actually photocopied that. Well, no, I didn't. I traced it from my laptop screen with a bit of paper because my printer's not working. So I have to cut that out roughly. So it's a bit. It's a bit rough and ready. Um, but as it's background it's not going to matter too much and it just fits into that space nicely I could always add more details later so that's going to go up here and it's going to fill that uh, that gap between the foundry and the little chef and that should complete well sort of complete at the back the buildings at the back there although I'm still going to probably put some bushes in between them to make it look a little bit more 3D and I could also put extra signs on there eventually as well. So I'll get that fixed up and see how that looks. So the, the uh, town now has a and q at the back of the uh, wall there. Which looks okay. I think it needs a bit of filler between the gaps there. Whether that's um, cut out buildings or some bushes or something. I'll have a little think about it. But that's basically the background sorted. A couple more wagons appeared. I've been selling some of my uh, older Great Western liveried stuff on eBay and getting some more appropriate 1970s type stock like this Backman uh, CCT in blue, weathered blue, uh, weathered from the factory. I didn't uh, bother weathering that one myself, but it matches into my other weathered stock quite well. I also took three uh, Great Western wagons which I decided not to sell, but actually to repaint. Um, save a bit of money and um, that was one of them that was great western livery and it's now in a grubby br livery uh put some transfers on there actually off china clay wagons but don't look don't read the numbers uh, uh there's also that fruit van which i've done similarly really mucky condition uh, individual planks painted different colors to make it look like it's ready for the scrap yard uh, I think that one next to it as well, a similar one, that was Great Western Grey as well. So again, keeping the budget down. Still not really spent much on this layout, apart from the one set of uh, walls I had to buy from Metcalf, which were only about £12 anyway. And I'm thinking of uh, trading some of my old stuff in today to one of the local shops to try and get a diesel of some sort. Um, I fancy a blue 37 or 47 or green 47 or green 37. I'll see what he's got, but uh, we'll see what I'll come back with later, if anything. Right, so back from my local model shop, or one of my local model shops. I'm quite lucky I've got quite a few local model shops around me. Uh, but in this case, um, Jeffrey Allison's in Workshop. Um, does a lot of specialised um, second hand stuff and weathering services and things like that. Good shop to check out if you're ever in Robin Hood country. So I've taken a few um, surplus items uh, which I, I couldn't really use, uh, thinning down a few uh, Great Western things and I got a couple of engines and a controller. You'll notice this is a DCC controller, albeit the basic uh, Backman one. Now this is, I think it's new actually, it looks X set, it's, yeah it's been taken out of a set so it's a very good price. Now I've got a history with DCC 
Um, a lot of people think it's the best thing in the world, and I was one of the first people to ever try DCC, and it was good for some things, not for others, and basically I went back to analog again, and then went back to DCC, and then went back to analog again. So I've not actually stuck with it. So, but I wanted, I wanted to try it again. Um, there's a number of reasons I, I don't like it, and a few that I do, which I won't get into now. But I've got, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite often buying locos on eBay and secondhand at swap meets, and sometimes they come with sound and chips fitted and so on. So it'd be useful to have that as well as I've got an American engine which got sound so you know it's just a handy thing to have uh, especially at a cheap price so I know it's a basic one but it's going to do me for now and also the controller I'm using on this um, shelf layout is the analog version of this the cheap train set one and it's got the same connectors so that made the, you know, the headphone socket thing so I'm hoping that I can just unplug plug back in and switch between DCC and analog and see how I get on with it, uh, whether I take to it or not. So that's the first thing. That's that was. A, I'm really pleased to to get that because uh, sometimes they're quite expensive on eBay. Those so good deal with that. So I need to read that book and figure out things. And I've got a couple of engines now. I intended to get um, a class thirty seven, class forty seven in green or blue, so nineteen seventies era. And unfortunately, he hadn't got either. So this is what I ended up with, with my coffee. Uh, <clears throat> so first of all, they're both second hand. I've got a Class 43 warship, which is named Royal Oak in BR Blue. Now it has, um, they're not mint and boxed, but I've not had it out of the box yet, so we'll have a look at that. But I had noticed that uh, somebody put pipes on, which doesn't seem to be... A big problem. We'll have a look at that layout in a few minutes. And the other one is a Hornby Class 50 Arc Royal in big blue. Now there is a slight issue with the, some of the detail on that, which I'll show you later. And I think that's also where pipes fitted. Um, so I didn't particularly go for uh, these items. So that that fits into my area perfectly, actually, especially with the Western Region wagons and the ex Great Western stuff. So that's a good, good fitting. This one's a bit out of era, but uh, never mind. We'll, uh, I'll have fun doing that up. I'll be weathering both of these renaming possibly. So we'll see how we go with those. So let's go and see. Uh, probably the forty-three on the layout first. So here we are on the layout, we've got both engines out of the boxes, We're sitting under the B&Q. So there is issues with both of these engines uh, being second hand you would expect them to be. Uh, so I've given them a good inspection. Um, first thing I've noticed is that um, somebody's put the pipes on the front of the warship and uh, painted the buffer heads. It's not too bad of a job, although the buffers don't spring anymore, I think they should do. But I might be able to sort that out. Slightly more of an issue on the other end is they put the NEM pocket and a couple of pipes on. But what's missing is the insert, the skirt. Now I'm pretty sure, looking through my bits, of, bits and bobs the other day, I think I found one. So that's probably not an issue. There is a missing couple for the other end, but again, I'm probably going to be using uh, KDs, so it's probably something I'd change anyway. Both buffer, as I say, they're both I think they're clogged up with glue, but uh, never mind, I might uh, be able to sort that out, maybe replace the buffers if necessary, maybe get some scale ones. Uh, there's no plates in the box, I think there usually is, or there, is, there wasn't in this case. Good, I might rename it anyway, so that doesn't matter. Seems to run okay, although I will give it a good service as well. Um, it's a little hesitant in some places, but it could be my, could be just the tracks one um, cleaning. But it's a nice, quiet, smooth runner. It has lights, of course. Um, it's a bit clean for my liking. I'll probably do a bit of weathering. 
but quite happy with that purchase. Uh, one of the things I don't like about these models is they insist on doing the um, the driver's desks in this grey plastic, uh, which I'm not that keen on. So I might get the body off and uh, do something about that. Um, and a bit of a weathering, as I said. So shall we have a look at the 50? Let's uh, get that out of the way. There's a couple of issues with this one. Um, for one, I knew about because he showed me in the shop. Um, there's a bit of bodywork damage on one of the ends uh, where they glued the, la glued the ladder back on. And if you take the body off, it just takes uh, a corner piece of the yellow plastic away. Just in that corner there, but uh, I think I'll probably sort out. No problem, I'll take the body off and sand that down and touch it up a little bit with the yellow. Um, there's no plates in the box, but I don't. I'm not sure whether they came with them or not. But anyway, I might re-number it. That door is a bit wonky. So if I take the body off, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that's put back in place. Not that it's broken, but I don't mind. I don't particularly. I'm not bothered about the opening doors. So if I have to glue it shut, I glue it shut. That's fine. Um, the other end, and um, there's no details fitted to that end, but they are in the box. The both couplers and the pipes are all in the box. So that's fine. It does make a little bit of a ticking noise when it runs, but um, I'll investigate to and see what that is. Let me just isolate this warship and I'll show you. Funny little ticking noise. I don't know whether that's the fan drive, because I think they're working fans in the roof. And most people disconnect them. But it's not too bad, I can live with that. Probably just want say uh, an oiling or something. Now one feature of these 50s is on dodgy track. Dirty track sometimes the the lights flicker. Uh, go to the red and the. It's not going to do it now, is it? There we go, a little bit flashing. It's a bit annoying. No, it's probably just my tracks though. If I clean them, it might not happen. Yeah, but not too bad as long as I can get rid of that ticking. And I'll uh, again, I'll probably detail this whether it rename it and so on. It sounds like there's something rubbing inside, so I'll get to work on that and I'll sort that out. And this is the controller I've been using, which is the basic uh, back one. You see it's very similar design to that uh, DCC one, so I'm hoping I can just I'll plug it plug it back in again. Now to the workbench, I'll show you some things I've got in the pipeline. I've got this Cambrian um, kit of a catfish wagon which is an engineer's wagon, it's very similar to dogfish but it's a bit lower, it's a bit shorter and I wanted one of those uh, and they're not currently available ready to run so I've got that Cambrian kit um, it's not going that well at the moment to be honest I'm absolutely cursing myself because I went and painted it I went and spray painted all the parts before gluing it together and I was stupid to do that because I wanted to use the liquid cement on it um, for a good build, and because I did that, I can't use it now. So I'm a bit mad with myself there. It's, I'm having to use the, the old fashioned glue, and it's a bit tedious, so I don't know how that's going to turn out. But never mind. Um, another thing I've got to more successful um, is these two wagons. Um, now, I wanted um, a Hornby new moulded uh, brakeman uh, of this variety, the 20 ton ones, and these are getting rare now. You can get them in other colours, you can get them in the modern colours like the Dutch and the Rail Freight and things like that, but plain old brown ones, you just can't get them. And I managed to find this one online. Uh, there's plenty of the old sort online, the old mouldings, but uh, not many of these modern ones. I managed to find it in a on eBay from Rails, uh, Rails Vault they call it, and they packaged it together with two other wagons. There was a four, uh, four plank um, Hornby wagon with the big couplers, which I didn't like particularly, which I've um, I've got rid of now. But there's also this um, uh, tank wagon, which I didn't buy it for that. I only bought it for that wagon, about thirty-five pound. I thought it was a bit expensive, but I'm not going to find another one of them. And as a bonus, it came with these other two wagons, and I love that one. I would never have bought that thing. This tank wagon, I would never have, I don't know if I'd been in the catalogue or seen it before at shows, but I would never have bought it, but now I've got it, 
I think it's fantastic. It's an old, um, I think it's an old Airfix Daypole one. It's got the old couplers on it, which I've taken off. I'm going to have to find some KD number no. 5s and chop those boxes off and fit them on there. But um, I'm really quite glad I got that. Um, which I never intended on. Uh, so I'm halfway through weathering this brake band. If you want to see how I've weathered it, um, look at my O gauge um, video a couple of weeks ago. I did the O gauge version, I'm just doing exactly the same um, with the brown mix, sort of um, painted the bottom of the uh, these walkway areas which weren't painted before on the roof. Um, I've had to pick out some of these details because surprisingly, Hornby didn't do it. None of these areas were actually painted white which was strange but now I've picked those out they look a lot better and I love that way I think that's really scale and really nice brake van so I might put a, um, a brakeman in it I'm going to put lamps on it I thought about putting lights in it actually as well but uh, we'll see how we go so um, I'm probably going to end the video now because uh, I'm going to spend the rest of the weekend um, um, doing uh, my favourite thing about model rail is really researching the prototype uh, so I'm going to go online and look through some books and, and really read up on these warships and the 50s look at photographs and uh, decide on the names and what I'm going to do with those so that will probably take me the rest of the weekend so that's uh, an enjoyable unexpected uh, thing I'll be doing and um, Next weekend, I may show you the results. Although, I will say that um, next weekend I'll be going to the Great Central Railway, uh, providing it's good weather, um, because they've got a steam car on. And they've got Bradley Manor, which is off of the Seven Valley. And they might have two ATFs, although it's looking unlikely at the moment. But uh, So I might, I'll, we'll certainly, as long as the weather's alright, go and film that, and I'll be putting that on my YouTube channel. Uh, so whether there'll be an update on the models next weekend or not, I don't know. But uh, give me a couple of weeks, and uh, you'll probably see these models transformed. So thank you very much for watching my channel. Um, if you want to comment and subscribe below, um, I shall see you uh, next time, probably after the Great Central Gala. So thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you. Bye bye.